For the latest top tips, reviews and advice, please subscribe below. Hello and welcome to Atwalls Outdoors with me, Mike. Today I'm you guys a bit of a review video on a brand new tent from Outdoor Revolution. So with me here, I've got the Kalahari PC 9.0 DSE. So a bit of a mouthful to be fair, um, but it all has kind of its own meaning. So obviously Outdoor Revolution is the brand. Uh, the Kalahari is the model. PC refers to it being polycotton. 9.0, it's a nine berth tent, uh, with, even though it has capacity to be even 11 or even 13 if you really wanted to. Um, and then the DSE refers to double side extensions. So we've got two built on almost side annexes onto the tent as well, which can be used for obviously sleeping purposes or storage. So in many ways, it's to be fair, the same as the Airedale 9 um, in their normal range, but being a polygotten. And there's a few tweaks here and there, which we'll go through through this video. Pretty much as it goes, it's probably the biggest tent you can buy in polycotton on the market, um, which is certainly a plus point for the people who want like no ends of space. Um, but it does mean that it is a bit of a lump. Pitching on your own, you can do it. I've seen it from our own outdoors pitching and packing videos. It took me no longer than probably about 13 minutes to pitch the whole thing on my own. Overall, it weighs about 70 kilograms in the bag. So you've got to bear in mind it's not a light tent. Uh, it's definitely more of a trailer job or back of the car and you're literally setting up a stone's throw where you are. You do get a roller bag included with the actual tent as well. So, and it's an oversized bag to help you fight it back into the bag as well. And again, you can see that from our own pitching and packing videos. Basically, with it being polycotton, obviously it's got the benefit of it's going to be breathable. So if it's a warm day like it's today, it's be a lot cooler on the inside of it. Uh, basically, the weave can expand and contract, allow air to pass through it. So on a hot day, expand, allow air out on a cold day contract and keep the warmth in. So it's the best of both worlds in that instance. Also the fact you it's much quieter material, so you haven't got a sort of synthetic kind of flapping noise. Generally of a lifespan, it will last you longer as well, so that's also one of the benefits, but some of the drawbacks are obviously it's weighty, hence the 70 kilograms, but also find that actually, in terms of it takes them maybe a fraction longer to dry out, and it's more imperative that you make sure it's packed away dry uh, otherwise it's more subject to mold and mildew, so that's obviously very crucial. What you've got with the Outdoor Rev is their own sort of uh, dynamic speed valve system. So what they've got is the actual valve they use to obviously inflate it, so each beam's done individually. It's got its own sort of pressure release point. So if you were to it go beyond the pressure, or it heats up and it expands, it's controlled by the pressure, so it lets it out. It really doesn't let it back in, and that's actually how you tell when you're pitching this thing whether at the right pressure. You keep going until you hear that little exhale of uh, air, and then you go, right, I'm bang on the money. So there's no need for a pressure gauge. You just keep going and going and going. With some of this size, it might be a consideration of certainly a, a inflatable pump, just because obviously it's quite a large diameter tubes, and there are a few of them as well. But as we saw, you know, it can be done happily on their own if you're keen enough. Other things to mention is the fact that the valve itself um, is quite actually the same kind of like a dinghy, so it's got a big kind of opening. Brilliant for getting the air in and getting the air out, so it means packing away is a bit easier than in potential other brands. It's a three zone ish tent, to be fair, it's more of a five zone tent. You've also got the two side bits, the sleeping area at the back, your main living area, and then obviously the front kind of awning area. You can actually buy an additional canopy if you wanted to make it bigger. It's going to be even a bigger lump, and it actually attaches on from the front zip as well. So you can basically add on the whole front section again on there if you wanted to, which in a way can be quite nice because the ground sheet function, which I'll show you in the front awning, makes it feel very much sewn in. So you've got, you've got the versatility, you can take it out. So it, it, it's, it's for those people who want to do that really, to be honest with you. Beautiful kind of fabric as well. Nice handle with obviously polycotton. You've got a brown pole on this side. So this could be your rain sort of safe door in and out the tent, regardless of what the weather's doing. You know, water can just dry off, come down here quite nice and neatly. Got the guide points throughout the tent as well to give you a good lot of structure and safeness. Tinted windows give you that kind of level of privacy without having to have the curtains up. So it means you still get great views from the inside, but people can only really see shapes rather than detail. So that's also a quite a nice benefit. And that's throughout the actual tent as well. You've even got a sky window located up here as well. So again, allows light into tent when you want that privacy curtain fully zipped up on the inside. The front door has luxury functionalities. 
So as we can see here, it can sort of based into three main sections and you can bring it back into thirds if you really wanted to uh, and it can go from right to left or left to right. So it depends on how you want to lay the tent out is how you want to do it. Personally, I see it's probably better kind of having it from right to left just because you, this then becomes your corridor into the actual tent and that will come a bit more apparent as we go inside in just a moment. Later on in the video, we'll also bring the camera around just to give you a bit more of a bullseye view and a circular view of the actual tent and kind of a bit more details on the space side of things. One thing I will to say is actually you've got a couple of zips on the front part. So what you can do is create a little kind of ventilation point. So you can create like a little veranda and actually the, full, the front door itself has got a full frontal mesh door as well as other mesh doors in, in sort of side of it. Um, and that's one thing actually I must say about this that for the price it's not necessarily cheap but then we're looking at a top end massive tent so it's all kind of obviously relative to that. But the level of mesh in here and the features in here, some of it is quite unique, uh, which you won't see elsewhere, certainly not from Outdoor Revolution at least anyway. Uh, and it's got some really nice details, which almost not justify the price point, but shows what you're paying that extra bit of money for, not only the space, but the other sort of features built in. So I'll tell you what, let's have a look on the inside and talk for a lot more features that the Kalahari has to offer. So now we're inside the tent, you can kind of get a bit more of a better idea for the front section and we'll kind of work our way from the front all the way to the back. So starting with the, also the optional kind of door section. So what I'm going to do is re-zip this back up and then we'll move it kind of out of the way from sort of left to right as we said. So let's close her up. So let's go. So as we can kind of open up the door, like we see here, we've got a secondary mesh door, which I'm going to just drop down to the bottom for the time being. So I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's open this up all the way. Now quite nicely, because the zip actually goes right down to the bottom, what it's going to enable me to do is be a bit lazy. and take this down there. So you've got little ties located along the side just here, and that'll basically mean that you can take the door and roll it in a big heap to the side, and that goes from left to right, as we said previously. What I'll also do, get the zips all sorted. Tangle in my own, my own mess. We we'll pull all this out of the way, chuck that in the corner, and then that then leaves the secondary mesh part. So, like I say, you've got a full frontal mesh panel built into this, so you can quite easily get that first layer against the bugs built into it as such. So, on a hot day or day where sort of you've got kind of a change in weather, this is going to give you a little, a little bit of protection against. Well, certainly against the wind a little, it sort of diffuses the wind a little bit, but you've got that kind of complete sort of sealness against it. So, really nice feature, something you don't really see too often now, especially on the very front door into the front section. And occasionally, in the middle, we do see a good lot of mesh, but that's a really nice, unique feature to this model. Obviously, and what you can also do is actually zips along to the ground sheet at the bottom as well. So, to get that completely thorough kind of mesh barrier, it does take a big box. The ground sheet also on the front toggles up and toggles down. So that way you've got kind of uh, either a flat lip so you can get push chairs and pram chairs directly in, or if you want that sealness, you've got that zip running on the bottom. Space initially, as you can see in the front section is pretty boastful. You can actually put a cooking unit more than happily over this side and cook over here. You've got a mesh ventilation point built into here as well, along with your kind of privacy curtains when you want to get the weather tightness inside of here. You've got little retaining clips located on the zip located there and that's going to help just rotate the strain away from the zip when you leave it in place. So it means that if you say you leave the door half open it's not going to suddenly try and pull its way out. The side mesh door we saw from the outside as well so like I said that when you've got this all completely shut up you can walk in and out of here quite happily without having to worry about the rain coming into the actual tent itself. 
The ground sheet section is actually included for this point. Uh, and like I said, it's, it feels like a sewn-in ground sheet, but actually it's just Velcroed over it. So it's quite a clever way that you can kind of remove it when you want to. So in the instance like now, I want, say, to cook in half the section, I can fold that back, cook inside of here. It doesn't matter if anything spills on the floor, but if you want that kind of sewn-in feel, at least you've got the flexibility to kind of make of it what you wish. That's something that Alan's already going to put into their tents across the range as we go forward. Moving on to the divisional door. Now, again, like the front door, you've got the option that you can actually sort of uh, zip it from right to left. And what you can also necessarily do as well is behind it, there is a mesh door as well. So you've got mesh windows located here and here with zip curtains to get the ultimate privacy. So like I will do now is I can I'll open this up. Again, zip along the bottom again. I'll be a bit lazy again. So you can again roll that back, keep it nice and neat if you wanted to. Alternatively, then you've got another full mesh panel, which again zips along the bottom, and then you've got door points located so you can again bring it from left to right. So lots of mesh built into it. And then when you want to roll it all away, you still got toggle points to go here, but again, Mr. Lazy here is not doing that today. And then that kind of opens up and straight from there, you can see kind of the overall size, pretty big. And then on top of that, you've got the side annexes, so works really nicely. Door-wise, we've got one door located on the left-hand side in the main living area. Again, that's got a full mesh built, built into it as well. So you've got a mesh door, mesh door, mesh door, mesh door. Um, on the right-hand side, we've got a curt, we've got sort of a nice PVC curtains, both with sky windows in here. So you've got a bit of light, like I said, zip-up curtains to get that level of privacy when you want to. And it's a bit more thorough. It also means that you can kind of do it halfway. So you can go up a little bit, fold that section over, get your privacy like that. Alternatively, zip always the top. Still allow light to come in. There's no actual protectors or roof curtains for that. Um, but, you know, certainly from a ground level, no one's going to look in and see anything. Plenty of room in here. Admittedly, I'd probably say, in terms of maybe comparison to the likes of, say, like Van Gogh's tents, for example, there's maybe not as additional headroom in here. I'm about six foot two, and I can stand up pretty much in the corner. Not dead side, but for the most part, it's still quite roomy. Just enough, you could probably put furniture sort of towards the end and not sort of lose too much space in the middle. Um, but doesn't fit, even though it's kind of a, uh, the main body is about 460 wide, it doesn't feel quite as big from a width point of view, but certainly a length and kind of point, side points, definitely, that's for sure. Got things like hanging points for lanterns located here, as well as your Velcro tabs um, down to your cable entry points down the side. So again, you can, doesn't matter which way you've got the main hookup coming, you can accommodate it where it's coming from the left or even coming from the right as well. Other things that are unique to Outdoor Revolution in terms of their range, what they've got is the uh, oxygen pocket system. So it's ability to have almost storage pockets built onto the actual points here, uh, which works nicely. So you've got little toggle points just located there. Uh, it just means you can maximize your living area by putting your clutter and stuff down the kind of main central parts. You've also got Velcro points here as well, if it's for their out, up and down out light, yeah. up and down lighters, which essentially is like a, almost like a lampshade upside down, and it floods, allows flood light around. For me, I'm a bit more of a fan of probably the strip light system, so you can probably actually then use the toggle points here to allow the strip light to come down and give you plenty of light going through that way. Back into the bedroom section now. So this essentially is a, a nine berth, so it's designed to be a two, three, two, and then you've got a bedroom section in the side bit here included to make it additional two. The, like I say, on the outside, there is ability to add an extra four people, i.e. buying a two berth bedroom for the other annex, or a two berth bedroom that's gonna take up kind of this section here. So sleeping at the 13 is quite a feat. I personally see this as being more of a storage section. And again, you might buy the additional tent. That way, if you've got some kids and they've got a friend to stay over, you can quite happily do them. And they're a good sized bedroom as you'll come to see in a second. We've got certainly a darker kind of fabric in the bedroom section here to hopefully give you a bit more better light. 
a good sort of depth, about 240 depth in the bedroom, which means in theory that things like camp beds or high-res air beds should be accommodated with the extra length, albeit the slope off. You've got zip divides between the two sections as well, so ability to get almost a separate kind of bedroom for one another, so it does feel completely separate. But you've got the versatility that the zips can be opened up, so we can come and be one big bedroom if you really want to, um, or make it, you know, a, a, two, a five and a two, and a two and a five, uh, the other way around. Uh, or you can use this almost for chucking your belongings or storage in here, and then have kids have their own separate bedroom. I really do see this as kind of the new version of dome tents in many ways. Rather than having big pods off, which you then have to sacrifice your living area, this kind of ticks the box quite a lot that you've got, still got great internal space, a great canopy area, still separate sleeping compartments for the kids, and then your own space as well, and plenty of room to spare. So I think this, for me, kind of outshines those in many ways, plus being the polycotton material. So let's pick up the camera, get a bit more feel inside, and talk for a few more features that it's got. So you can never really quite fully appreciate, I don't think, until you step inside of it. So as we come in, straight away you can kind of see that kind of side bit there. So you've got a darker bedroom in there as such. So that's the additional bedroom that comes included with it. Complete inner, obviously you, what you could if you want to do, remove that inner quite happily and just use that for actually a uh, storage. There is no back door in that bedroom, I must say that. Whereas in comparison to one on the left, you have got a back door and also there's a mesh panel built into it as well. So if you wanted kids to have the access to, you know, come and go as they please, then it would be worth buying a bedroom for that side and using that one as a storage pod. The pod itself has actually got a uh, hanging point here, so you can buy uh, additional rail to go in there as well, just to brace it up. And again, you've got your cable entry points located down in the bottom there, quite nice and neatly. But even in here, you've got great headroom, and you can probably appreciate now, as we sort of look out, kind of the sheer space you've got in here. The bedroom section at the back, like I said, are darker. You've got storage pockets located down the bottom here, as well as there's only little cable points in here so you can get main hook up inside your tent. And there's a little hanging point up there as well for a lantern. But you've got zip dividers, like I said, so you can get a real kind of complete privacy. And even the middle bedroom has got its own little storage pockets located down the bottom. And again, same on this side as well. Other things we've come to mention is there's little Velcro tabs located down here, and that's for the cable entry to go underneath that point so it doesn't come a trip hazard. Oversized beams as well, helps to give the heavier PVC uh, polycotton fabric a bit more of a, a robust feel. Low level ventilation down the bottom of the actual window as well, it's gonna certainly help with circulation along quit with all of the um, you know, mesh you've got built into it, including this little side door there. Low level, uh, you've also got a little Velcro, um, sorry, cable entry point down the bottom there, and that was the uh, kind of half and half uh, door, so window and mesh that is built in so you can sort of get the airflow into it. As we come out of the tent, you can probably appreciate now a bit more for the side annexes. So I'm not gonna lie again, because it's a big tent, you know, it's a question of you will make sure, you know, you're aware of what you're getting in for. It's obviously heavier, as we talked about 70 kgs, but also the pitch size is a bit bigger. Because those sort of twin kind of uh, double-sided extensions, your main body is 460 and the extensions each are 145. So you're looking in the realms of about six and a half, just under six and a half meters wide um, for the tent. Beautiful as it is, and you know, definitely gonna be a jumbo pitch, uh, depending on where what kind of campsite you go to. Um, but overall, it sits really smartly, and you've got this kind of what they call random style door as well. So it gives you the ability to kind of have the door kind of halfway. Uh, or fully open, and it sort of rolls back from sort of left to right as we see it. And again, you've got little windows built into kind of the annexy bit in that section there, just to allow a bit of light if you wished, along with the rain safe door. So overall, it's an impressive tent, an impressive price point as well. And like I say, if you need be, you can always check uh, the link below this video, which takes us straight to the website where we got uh, the tents, obviously price, and other, other the extras you can get with it as well. So that's always worth a bit of a look. But overall, I think, it's an impressive, and it certainly caters to the person who wants the ultimate amount of space. Um, but it's the fine details I do really quite like in here, and it's certainly the space, the double side ants, it's got lots of flexibility, which is something you really want to gain, certainly as you progress in camping, and you get, you know, the kids get older, want more space. As long as you can, I said, 
you know, it's about making sure you've got a somewhere to potentially put this up. You need to dry it, and also manage the weight of it. Those two aspects. It's a great, great ten. So overall, a bit of a bonus. I think I do like this. It's one that we're certainly trying to look to display at our indoor showroom in some formal manner, just because I think you to get your head around it properly. It's one of the things you got to see in the flesh. Um, but no, that is kind of our video review on the brand new Outdoor Revolution Kalahari 9PC DSE. For more information, check in links below and let us know what you think about it as well. We'd love to hear from you guys in the comments box. But yeah, thanks again for watching and we'll hope to see you again soon.